Hi, my name is Sam. I'm the owner of Professional Fleet. And today I'm going to talk to you guys about how to do a used car inspection. Um, I feel this is the most important, number one thing you can do whenever purchasing a vehicle. Um, the $30 to $70 you might spend somewhere to have this inspection done will literally save you thousands of dollars. Uh, it could also make the difference from you either buying the vehicle or not buying the vehicle. Um, but it's very important to know before you buy the vehicle exactly what you're getting yourself into. Because uh, in general, most people don't sell a car because it's a perfectly running car. They're selling the vehicle because it's not in great condition and they want something better. So the point is to find out if the vehicle you're about to buy is better than one you may have or if it's actually worse than one you may have. So that way you know going into it exactly uh, what it's going to take to take care of it, fix it, and verify if you actually want to buy it or not. So we're going to start by doing an underhood inspection on the vehicle, show you how to do that so that way you kind of have an idea as to um, what it all entails and what we do to verify if the vehicle is in good shape or not. And that's where we're going to start. All right, so we're going to start off by checking uh, the fluids, um, the belts, the hoses. Uh, we have a checklist that I use. It's about a 30 to 50 point inspection list. That way we don't miss anything or forget anything. And this form can be downloaded at professionalfleet.com uh, that you can print out for anything that you'd like to use you know, for either the person inspecting the vehicle for you or yourself. Um, so we're going to start by doing the fluid stuff under the hood, doing belts, hoses, checking for uh, engine leaks, transmission leaks, coolant leaks, uh, anything that looks out of place, something that might be broken. Um, we really want to look and just kind of make sure that all these, everything under the hood is working properly. And that's kind of where we're going to start, by checking battery, stuff like that. Here, we're going to start by checking the belt. We want to see if it's cracked, frayed, uh, broken, or missing. So you want to check and see if the, if the belts are there. Uh, we're going to check the hoses. And we got a lot of hoses on this vehicle, so we want to check the hoses, make sure there's no leaks or cracks. Uh, make sure they're not too soft and spongy. Uh, they should be nice and firm. Um, so we're checking those out. And this vehicle's got about 85,000 miles on it, so it's definitely getting close to time for hoses and, and belts. Uh, belt is okay here. Hoses are okay, they're not leaking or anything, uh, but for mileage reasons, it'd be nice to change them. Uh, but they do pass the inspection, so we'll circle that off the list. So, belts are good, uh, hoses are good. Uh, we're going to check the battery over here now, and make sure terminals are not corroded and everything's tight. Cables are good, terminals look good, battery looks in good shape, there's not a bunch of corrosion or uh, battery acid spilling out of it, so we look good there. Uh, we're going to do a quick battery check. And the battery should be tested somewhere around five to 600 cranking amps is the average battery. So you want the battery to test out at least around five to 600 cranking amps. So that's what we're looking for. Make sure it passes five to 600 cranking amps. And this battery actually fails. So this vehicle does need a battery. Correct. So the battery checked. So battery is bad. Um, and we're going to check that off as being bad and 350 crank amps. All right. Cables are good. Now we're going to check tune-up components. Uh, this vehicle, as well as a lot of vehicles, don't really have plug wires. They don't have cap and rotor anymore. They pretty much only have coils and spark plugs. So to get to these parts, they're really difficult to see and do. So pretty much these have already been replaced. We can tell these are brand new. So we can assume at this point that the coils are brand new and good, as well as the plugs have more than likely been changed. Um, so at this point, we know those are more than likely good, as well as the vehicle runs well. So if the vehicle ran poorly, we could also suspect that it may need plugs or wires or tune-up parts. So at this time, uh, we can check off the list and say that tune-up parts are good, since they look brand new. Uh, now we want to check the air, fuel, and air and fuel filters as well as PCV valve if it has it. Uh, this vehicle does not have a PCV valve, or at least not one that can be checked. It's kind of internal. Uh, we can though we can check the air filter under the hood. And that is over here. And she looks to be in pretty good shape. So air filter is a go. We just don't want a lot of dirt, and debris, and dust or leaves in there and want it to be nice and white or yellow in color, whichever the filter is. And that all looks good. So, filter is good for now. We'll leave that be. Air filter is good. All right, next we're going to check is the oil. Uh, what we're looking for is to make sure the oil is topped off on the indicator mark. 
and oil is topped off looks good and clean um, and decently colored so oil is topped off and good that passes our test alright so we check that off the list alright next we want to check is our headlights so we're going to turn our headlights on just make sure headlights work and both headlights are on and we're just going to make sure our brights come on as well so headlights are good And then we're going to check the turn signals, tail lights, brake lights, pretty much go through all the lights on the vehicle. Make sure they all work. As well as the horn, check the horn. Left turn signal is good. Check the wiper blades and the washers. Make sure those all function. And those are all good. So left turn signal is good. Right turn signal is good. Check our brake lights. Make sure those are good. Third brake light, tiger brake lights. And we want to make sure that our reverse lights work. And our tail lights all work. And those are all good. And check four way flasher as well. Sure Alright, so we check all of our lights off. We check our wipers off. And now we want to check our coolant. And we're going to want to check our transmission fluid, power steering fluids, washer fluids, brake fluids. So let's go through, make sure washer fluids, or you make sure your brake fluid's full. That's all, looks like it's good and full. Uh, we're going to want to check over here, make sure coolant's full. And it looks like our coolant's topped off up the mark. Want to make sure our power steering is full. Pop that and check, that looks full. And washer fluid, check that. Make sure washer fluid's full so we know there's no leaks in the system. So if we've checked all of our fluids and all of them are topped off and full, we can pretty much assume at that point that there's no major leaks anywhere on the vehicle or they would be low. So as of right now, everything on the hood of the vehicle passes. Uh, we find no major engine leaks of oil or coolant above or on the, under the uh, hood of the vehicle. I don't see anything broken or missing or damaged that needs attention. So at this point everything under the hood passes except for the bad battery that we found. And that concludes the under hood inspection of the vehicle.